Now, going on to the culture part of the podcast, you have Bud Light. Again, trying to tweet, and the bird, or in this case, just the X, just falls down. Or, a more apt metaphor might be, it's at the end of the alphabet still. Something like that. So they try to do a little tweet where they talk about NFL Sunday, which, again, football season and sun, you know Sunday footballs, Americans love the sports balls. It used to be a huge sales mechanism for these alcohol companies, and Bud Light in particular, because apparently you can't enjoy, well, now that I think about it, sports balls, games would probably only be, many of them would only be enjoyable or tolerable if you're quite inebriated. So perhaps it makes sense. Now, this is a commercial they put out, and within five hours, it was already getting ratioed. Well, within minutes, but the statistics I took today for the show, it was taken five hours after it. Now, it looks like, I'll go ahead and play this right now. So you get a nice little a tavern in the middle of rural America, which ironically is the part. It's the demographic they pissed off the most, and many would say they alienated them completely, and they're not going to get those folks back. Oh, uh, Steelers, ooh. Yo, Paula, you want some coffee? Uh, apparently, well, this might make sense for the average Bud Light drinker. So this is a couple sitting at a coffee shop in the morning, presumably, and they're drinking coffee, and instead, the waiter is actually going by and replacing their coffee, the you know, cups of coffee, with bottles of Bud Light, which I don't know how sad your life would, I mean, morning drinking is something I thought you did in college when you had a lot of time on your hands. I can't imagine being an adult or pretty much anyone over 23 years old and drinking in the morning. And I don't know how sad your life would have to be to drink a Bud Light in the morning. That's, it's, it almost looks like a commercial for antidepressants. Like if, you're, if your life is like this, you probably need to call this big pharma company. Carry a farm. They're opening the cans. It looks like the Bud Light has a graffiti on it. I think it's a logo for the Saints. Why did someone have, they were at a bar but the TV wasn't already on and they just celebrated them turning on a TV. How irresponsible is that bar owner where they didn't turn on the TV when they first get in the bar? I mean, that's bar prep 101. You get the place ready for business, but perhaps the least important detail about this. Someone wearing a Chicago Bears jersey, I think. <laughs> They'll be good next year is the cliche. Kind of like the city of Chicago. They'll be good next year. They won't. Uh, a lot of fat, drunken people doing the cliche celebration that someone made a point at with a sports ball. On a Sunday. Celebrating. They're all happy because their sports ball team won. And it says, easy to Sunday. Easy to enjoy. Is that false advertisement? Last time I checked, it tastes like piss water. Granted, my sample size is relatively small. I've probably had one about 10, 15 years ago. How discriminatory. They, they showed, the commercial didn't have a single, single pride flag or trans community flag. Will they be boycotted again? Because again, the dumb thing about Bud Light, they used to be a product that everyone could enjoy. And then they decided to choose Dylan Mulvaney and, you know, pretty much piss off everyone. So you have people on the right who are angry, people in the middle who are confused, a little angry, and people on the left because, and they said this, quote unquote, they didn't stand by Dylan Mulvaney. They started to boycott the brand as well. Famously a bar in Chicago land, which there's about gay bars apparently there. Well, not apparently, not coincidentally, but there's a holding company where there's an establishment owner where they own four bars. And they said, because they didn't stand by Dylan, they're canceling the carrying of all Anheuser Bush InBev products. That wasn't the only instance. There was a couple in Minnesota, as well as Los Angeles, and it was a trend. So, because Bud Light was so indecisive and they did nothing, they shot themselves in the foot yet again. So, will this commercial change your perception of the brand? No, it doesn't change my perception at all. Now, it looks like within the first five hours of it being posted, there was 550,000 views. So, quite a good sample size. It's about, you know, a little more than half a million folks. and. 527 people liked it. 
That's it. That equals a 0.09% like ratio, which is also known as trash. I can't imagine. So that means even the people who work at Bud Light aren't actually tweeting for them. I can't help but notice even your employees don't support the company, perhaps. Oh, what employees are left. Now, interestingly enough, there were a couple tweets that were positive to it. However, they're all garbage. And when I say garbage, I mean, they're not real. So I looked at them. We have one from, it looks like this was a positive post from someone by the name of Aaron. And I looked at his profile. All he does is just repost for every business possible, including Budweiser and the other account, which again, they're both brands of Anheuser, Bush and Bev, but he just reposts for the other companies. Same with Kelly, another account. And they wrote posted for two companies in particular. One was Bud Light, Anheuser, Bush and Bev. And as well as a company called, or a handle on Twitter, Twitter called Millions. So they're literally just retweets. They're not authentic thoughts. There was one original company. Well, I was gonna say, I don't know. I don't know how moronic this was, but the Philadelphia Eagles, the Mark Wahlberg team, they responded to the post saying, cheers to that. Now that got 5,443 views and how many? 26 likes, which is, Terrible. There's like, aren't there more than 26 players on the Eagles team? And that is a ratio of 0.47%. Also known as awful. But again, I don't know the demographics about the Philadelphia Eagles, but I wouldn't think they would be in favor of the decisions Bud Light was making. It almost seems like career suicide for that team to do this type of endorsement. Now, granted, I know these teams also have million dollar multi-million dollar contracts with these companies for the stadiums and you have the franchise all the sponsorships but i don't know why they i don't know why they would voluntarily tweet that because i don't see how that's ever going to increase the brand sentiment or really change anyone's mind now it looks like one of the interesting tweets of course these are the ones that were actually followed and liked were all you know negative so it was subsequently ratio now the first one was from Rich Mooney, who's, he, he is really consistent with his polls. So he went on there, his response to the Bud Light tweet, he said, what are you gonna buy for your fridge? Uh, he usually does that. That got 149 votes. Again, all these statistics are within the first five hours of posting. And that got 149 votes with 91.3 saying, no hands are your bush in Bud for me. So only 8.7% 8 of the people polled said that they would make mine a Bud Light. So it is going up, I believe last week, or actually it's been a little while since they tweeted, it was more closer to like 3%. So the ratio is getting a little bit better. Now, another one was a tweet response by the name of Mute Toggle, in which he posted a Twitter, Dill Mulvaney drinking a Bud Light. And his quote was him saying, Bud Light is great for drag parties and events, but may not be the beer of the choice for the NFL Sunday LMFAO. Which, according to the Urban Dictionary, means laugh my effing ass off learning today. Now, that got 3,379 views and 99 likes, giving it a ratio of 2.72%, which was the best of all the responses. So, again, I don't know what Bud Light is going to do to turn this ship around, but just posting on social media isn't helping, even though it seems like they're buying some tweets to get some positive responses, but they're not real people. They're people who have a career or just are they're either a bot who just reposts for companies or their career is just doing that and getting paid for it. I can't imagine just a, a random fan of Bud Light doing that. So it certainly doesn't feel authentic, but it'll be interesting to see how their social media skills improve from here. And th at this point, it almost seems like they seem they need professional help. Get any good marketing company to go take in and take over your social media because they're not doing great. And I don't see them change that anytime soon. Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in. And again, we're trying to get to 3000 subscribers by the end of August. If you can click that button, I'd greatly appreciate it. Also taking the time to like and comment the video is also appreciated because it helps with the video algorithm. Also the feedback helps, helps me make the show better and better. Thanks again for tuning in. Don't forget to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone. Just stay safe and fight the good fight.